Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Carl Choi on the line. He's founder and CEO over at The Great Company. Carl, welcome to the show. Hey, Adam. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Oh, man, excited to get into today's topic, the future of experiential design, um, big topic over here. Um, but before we do, I do want to get a little bit more into what you're doing over at The Great Company. So first, tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Sure. First of all, we're The Great Company not because we're full of ourselves, it's because we believe in being in great company. And so it's a daily reminder when we have our business card and our email address uh, speak to us and remind us who we, we represent. And ultimately, uh, very simply put, we, our vision is to be the global leader in producing meaningful shared experiences. We're a team of producers that love bringing movie magic to life. Uh, often, people would sometimes even, uh, in more extreme cases, compare it to what, what we do to building the West World of today. Uh, mm. Except you can't sleep with or kill any of our actors. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. I got it. So go. what, what kind of... Simple? I love it. Um, so what kind of, um, I mean, what kind of clients do you like? So there's a lot of people right now listening. They're like, okay, um, they get it, they understand. But what kind of clients do you typically like to work with? Sure. We, we service, I mean, we have our direct-to-consumer offerings, which is kind of mm -hmm. the immersive theater production. We also work with tons of brands. I mean, uh, we originate in the movie business. So one of our first clients and partners was Marvel Studios. And then from there, we expanded into Fox and everyone else. And, uh, yeah, now where we are today, we've expanded into sports, video gaming. We just produced the largest Dungeons and Dragons activation in Italy's East Comic Con. And so, wow. yeah, we, we love, uh, any IP driven, uh, you know, content and ability to take our movie magic. And, you know, we have a, a team of stuntmen, content creative fabricators that really bring these worlds to life. And so we're also seeing this type of storytelling being prevalent in, uh, the world of sports and, and, even food and beverage and just retail and hospitality, needing to uh, con convey their brand story in their experiential design so that when consumers walk into their space, they can not only see what they're about, they could smell, touch, hear what they're about and, and really walk away with uh, experience that's, you know, only found in the presence of that brand. Wow, that's amazing. Um, all right, now, um, enough waiting for this. So the future of experiential design, I mean, where do you want to start with that one? Well, things are changing. Um, I mean, things are, technology are moving. I mean, uh, at the time of this recording, we're in the midst of this uh, COVID-19. And, you know, I think uh, meaningful shared experiences could be reinterpreted than just mass gatherings. And, you know, through technology, through innovation, I think there's a lot of ways for us to uh, spend time together in a safer way. I think even in how we share experiences now, I think uh, obviously folks are a lot more attentive to uh, the hygiene of things. And so I think there's a lot more implementation and processes that need to be put into place so people can have uh, not only meaningful shared experiences, but also safe shared experiences. And so what do you, like, what do you see as some ideas for that? So I get it. There's going to be other ways that we, that we um, share experiences. But what are some ideas? Like, what do you see happening if you had your crystal ball? <laughs> yeah, my crystal ball is in, in the future. I think, if, if anything, I think we've already seen it. Uh, a vertically mm -hmm. integrated uh, brand and storytelling uh, as done by Disney. I think they've kind of figured out the formula. Uh, they've uh, been able to take IP. Uh, market it through their film and TV, then bring you right back into their Disneyland, and then sell you their products uh, through Star Wars Galaxy. And so I think uh, brands are going to have to learn to adapt uh, that, you know, just being on one medium is not enough. You have to be vertically integrated. And when we say experiential design, not just the event itself, it's everything leading up to and post uh, the event to bring it back full circle. Love it. Um, I, I love your example, by the way, for what Disney's done. I mean, they really did bring it full circle, and you're immersed. And they, I mean, they take it even a step further, in my opinion, from the standpoint of just how long they've been here. Like, I can think of something like simple, like when when Toy Story came out, and you're like, oh my gosh, like the original, like way back when, and the next ones came out. I mean, to me, I didn't really realize my connection 
with just um, with any anything along those lines until I kind of went down that path as a consumer, but that took like what 15, 20 years or something like that, and then it kind of brought me full circle on that whole like a uh, Pixar, I should say, on the whole like on the whole thing that they created in, the, in that whole other world. Um, so now I love it. It's, it's amazing. Um, so what do you think um, is next in terms of, um, I mean, so I, I get what they're doing, but in terms of like gatherings and things like that, do you see virtual, like VR? I mean, what do you think about kind of that space and gaming, like how these things are changing since we're not doing big stadium things? Like how do you see that kind of evolving in the near future? Yeah, I think one of the biggest struggles um, uh, for technology has been, you know, a reason on top. And I think now we have more – more than uh, a good reason for people to adopt, and one of them is streaming. Mm-hmm. I think streaming will be a big thing. I think VR has been struggling over time, and mm-hmm. a lot of it has to do with just accessibility. Um, not everyone has, you know, a thousand bucks to fork out for, for a nice pair of goggles. I mean, there are some cheaper ones today, um, sure. but I think um, still that that the sharing of goggles are still there's a sanitization problem issue, and so I think um, streaming will be a big one. I think content production will change. Um, you know, we're used to these large-scale production, but you know, even right now, lar- any crowd bigger than 10 or even, uh, you know, even worse than you know, 50 is, is, is in question. And so you're gonna find a lot more kind of, um, you know, bootstrap type production. But because um, of the situation we are at hand, you know, it's, it's gonna be elevated in quality. Uh, I do feel like. Travel is going to be tough, so uh, things will be localized in a way. There's going to be uh, a distrust in, 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 you know, getting stuck in one place together because, you know, who mm-hmm. wants to get stuck on a cruise for, for two months? I mean, that's personally my worst nightmare. I mean, I was stuck on a week. Stuck in that. And so, yeah. And so I think, I think everything is going to get localized. Um, you know, off, often I think our generation may have, you know, saved up our cash and, you know, took a family trip to Disneyland or Disney World and spent a week there, I think we're going to now look for local options because it makes the more sense. On a business level, I think uh, a lot of teams would travel and, you know, someone in New York might be producing Activision in L.A. I don't think that's going to be viable anymore. I think you're going to realize that it makes more sense for a New York company to hire someone in L.A. to do their work as, and vice versa. So, yeah, there's going to be a huge uh, disruption in the ways of working. Uh, I think it's all positive. I think it's going to be, mm-hmm. you know, going to shake us out of our comfort zones, and it's going to open up a lot of room for innovation and, 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 and to me, lots of fun. Yeah, no, totally. I think I I completely see the positive side of that too, and creating a lot of opportunity and maybe some of those biases that were once there. So certain, let's just say, even workplaces where they thought, oh no, we have to be face to face, or we have to be this, or this is just the way we do things since they've been doing it like that for twenty, thirty years. Um, when they see that they had to adapt because they were somewhat forced to adapt, obviously, um, and maybe productivity and systems and processes changed and possibly even depending on, you know, and this isn't going to be across the board, but I think when that happens, a lot of times some good is going to come from it and there's going to be some more effective processes and things done and there's going to be some uh, many, many aha moments of, oh my gosh, we could have done it this way the whole time. Like, I, I see that already happening. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I mean, corporate travel budget is going to cut tremendously, <laughs> just because, not because of this whole travel ban, because yeah. they're going to realize you don't need to travel that much. There's all kinds of solutions and get the same things done. Yeah, no, I like it. Um, so, Carl, if somebody is listening to this and they want more information or they want to connect you, um, what's the best – first off, no, two-part question. Number one, what's the right type of company that's typically a good fit for the great company? And number two, what's the best way for that type of company to connect with you? Sure. The right fit of the companies, I think, for us right now, like like I mentioned earlier, I think the, the any, any brand that has a story that's tell. I think for us, we are we find ourselves often uh, partnering with companies for education purposes first because we realize the world we're in is too quite dynamic and and you know it's it's a whole different world and and Walt at Disney was way ahead of it all you know and so mm-hmm. you know being that I think there's been you know like you said like 50 years of history that has been unveiled because it was all you know tricks and, and magic tricks that were of secrets but now they're not much secrets anymore but there's still quite of a learning curve. Uh, what mm-hmm. experiential design means. And so um, there's that. And then second is, um, you know, how to get a hold of us. It's very easy, the great com. Uh, also, uh, our URL, uh, as well as our Instagram, the great company. And myself, it's just 
at Carl Choi across all platforms. So very easy. Fantastic. Well, hey, Carl, it's been awesome having you on the show today and uh, appreciate your insight on the future of experiential design. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Marketing, definitely give us a subscribe there and leave us some comments in the comment section. Love to hear what you're working on and what kind of businesses you have going on. And Carl, thanks again for coming on the show.